This project aims to describe the comparison between Eric Erickson's psychosocial development theory and Jean Piaget's cognitive development theory. We will start by discussing the career and life of both Erickson and Piaget, while also covering an overview of both theories, with a focus on adolescents age 7 to 11 years old. We have also included two case studies to highlight the application of both theories in reference to both Erickson's and Piaget's approach. Eric Erickson was a German-American developmental psychologist and psychoanalyst. He was known for his psychosocial theory on development. He also cultivated the idea of childhood development in the context of society. He began his career as a school art teacher in Vienna in 1927. His colleagues at his school noticed his profound sensitivity and understanding of his young students and encouraged him to follow his interests and study psychoanalysis training at the Vienna Psychoanalytical Institute. He served as a professor at many prestigious institutions such as Harvard, UC Berkeley, and Yale. Eric Erickson's theory of psychosocial development emphasizes that personality develops in a predetermined order. During each stage, an individual experiences a psychosocial crisis, which ultimately can have a positive or negative effect on personality development. Erickson believed that each stage involved the psychological needs of the individual conflicting with demanding pressures of society. The theory suggests that a positive effect from each stage will result in a healthy personality for the individual. We've included only three stages of Erickson's theory. However, there are eight total stages. The first stage is trust versus mistrust, which occurs at birth until one and a half years old. Stage two is autonomy versus shame, occurring from one and a half year old to three years old. Stage three is initiative versus guilt, happens from age three to five. In this stage, the children assert themselves more frequently, and the action of play is essential. Play allows children to explore their interpersonal skills. However, if assertiveness and free play are discouraged, then children develop a sense of guilt. Stage four, industry versus inferiority. This stage occurs during adolescence between the ages of five and 12. At this stage, the, ch the child's peer group will have greater significance and provide a source of self-esteem and, and self-concept for the child. Ch children in this stage need approval and encouragement to develop confidence and competence. However, if approval and encouragement are withheld by parents and or teachers, children fear, feel inferior as a result and begin doubting their own abilities. This can cause them to avoid reaching their full potential. Stage 5 is identity versus role confusion, which occurs from ages 12 to 18. In this stage, the adolescent searches for their sense of self and personal identity through exploration of personal values, beliefs, and goals. Stage 6 is intimacy versus isolation and ranges from ages 18 to age 40. Stage 7 is generosity versus stagnation. This stage happens from age 40 to age 65. The last stage is ego integrity versus despair and occurs from age 65 and older. Now we will discuss Jean Piaget's life and career. Jean Piaget was a Swiss psychologist known for his work on child development. He created the theory of cognitive development, which placed a new importance on the way children are educated. He had an early interest in zoology and published several academic papers on mollusks before college at the University of Nichendal. His psychology career began in Paris, where he evaluated standardized tests for all boys' school. He noticed that children gave wrong answers to certain questions that adults answered correctly. Thus, this led him to research why children may have inherently different cognitive abilities than those of adults. This was the launching point for his cognitive development theory. Piaget's cognitive development theory explains how children construct mental models of the world around them, or mental schemas as Piaget called them. He believed that intelligence develops through biological maturation and interaction with the environment. He focused on how fundamental concepts like numbers, time, quantity, and justice materialized in the minds of young children. His theory encompassed four simple stages. The first stage of Piaget's theory is the sensory motor stage, which occurs from birth until the age of two. The main achievement of this stage is object permanence. The second stage is the preoperational stage, which occurs between the ages of two and seven, and children begin to embrace symbolic thought. 
The third stage is the concrete operational stage, occurring between the age of 7 and 11. This is the stage with, with which we are focusing on for the discussion. The concrete operational stage is considered a major turning point in mental ability because it is the beginning of logical thought in adolescence. Children start to understand the concepts of conservation and rever reversibility. For example, children can understand that mass stays constant as shape changes. The last stage is the formal operational stage occurring from 11 years old to the end of life. In this stage, adolescents and adults are able to consider abstract concepts and logically test their own hypotheses. This Venn diagram compares both theories from Erickson and Piaget. Erickson's theory emphasized more heavily society's impact on the mental development of the individual, while Piaget's theory remained more focused on the biological aspect of how mental capacity adapts over the lifespan. Both theories play a role in the way that teachers and parents interact with children of all ages today. Both theories suggest children between the ages of 7 and 11 can complete Elite complex task. Erickson's industry versus inferiority stage reaches further and states that encouragement and approval drive success for children in this stage. For teachers and parents with children 7 to 11, Erickson would suggest encouragement and approval at times when children show competency in their task. For Piaget's theory, the process for a child completing this stage relies solely on the biological aspect of development. Piaget would encourage teachers to use visual aids like charts and illustrations to facilitate step-by-step -step learning um, that children strive toward as they are beginning or using logical processes. Now we're going to go over case studies relating to each theory. Case study one. Sarah and Thomas are two 10-year-old fifth graders in the same class. Sarah loves math and does very well on her math tests in school. She recognizes shapes, patterns, and has great reasoning skills. However, Thomas struggles in math and does not recognize shapes and patterns nearly as well as Sarah does. Every afternoon, when Sarah goes home to do her work, her parents ask her about it, encourage her, and always ask if she needs help. When she comes home with excellent test scores, her parents cheer and offer to take her out to dinner. When Thomas comes home from school, his parents do not ask about school and seem not to care, even when he tells them he is struggling. Thomas continues to do worse than Sarah in math. Erickson's industry versus inferiority stage emphasizes that students need encouragement to do their best. Sarah is receiving positive reinforcement from her parents, which allows her to excel in school. Sarah is developing a sense of pride in her accomplishments through interactions which enable her to, for to form a strong self-concept. Sarah was encouraged and commended by her parents, which allowed her to develop a feeling of confidence and belief in her abilities. Thomas did not get the same encouragement and therefore struggles to become confident due to the potential feelings of failing and inferiority. Piaget's concrete operational stage states that a child like Thomas or Sarah's age should be able to think more logically and more sophisticated. If Piaget were to assess Thomas, he would decide that Thomas has yet to reach the concrete operational stage because he does not understand the concept of conservation, which could affect his math skills. For instance, if Thomas were to have a math question regarding separating shapes into pieces, he would not understand that separating the shape would lead to the same shape if those pieces were to be cut or were to be put back together again. Egocentrism also could play a role in the situation. In this stage, children begin to understand the way that others see them, so this approach could give the perspective that Thomas recognizes that his peers already see him as not good at math, which does not encourage him to attempt to succeed. Case study number two. Sarah and Thomas also run cross country together. The coach loves Sarah but does not know, how, does not know Thomas as well. Sarah is the best runner on the team, and her whole entire family is very supportive of, of her love for the sport and cheers her on at every single meet. Sarah is excellent at pacing herself and her speeds during the long-distance runs. Thomas is not the worst on the team, but he is also not the best. He does not understand how to pace his speed and energy, so he begins by sprinting and then becomes surprised when there is a whole other other stretch of the path ahead of him. Additionally, his family has never been to a meet and knows he's not the best, so they do not bother supporting him. Sarah continues to be the best runner on the team, while Thomas slowly becomes worse and worse. 
Erickson's industry versus inferiority stage emphasizes that positive reinforcement encourages athletes to reach the highest potential. Sarah's coach and family both encourage her, which allows her to develop self-confidence through appraisal. She receives support that Thomas did not. Thomas did not get the same appraisal from his family or coach. His family never came to the games. This allowed him to believe that he is not confident in his ability to succeed, which leads him to being unwilling to put forth maximum efforts if he is already assumed to be average. Piaget's concrete operational stage states that a child like Thomas or Sarah's age should be able to think in a more logical and sophisticated manner. With Piaget's approach, it is understandable that Sarah is able to think about how long the race is and pace herself perfectly so she can optimize her endurance and speed. However, his approach may argue that Thomas has not reached the concrete op operational stage yet, even though his age falls into the range. He has proven to not understand reversibility. If he sprints in the beginning of the race, he will become too tired to run later. He also does not understand conservation. Even though he cannot see the race, he should be able to understand that there is a lot of the path left to run. In conclusion, these two theories appear to both contradict and complement each other in many situations. For ages 7 to 11, the two theories could complement each other since Erickson's psychosocial development theory focuses on relationships and external encouragement, and Piaget's cognitive development theory focuses on how the child's mind develops internally. The two theories emphasize the point that children at this stage are starting to become more sociocentric, logical, and understanding of the world. However, Erickson believes that in this stage, children's ways of learning is through external motivation and supporting from fam support from family and teachers, while Piaget argues that it is simply the way the child's brain is developing. These are critical years for the cognitive and so psychosocial development of children, and years that the child should be should be supported and nurtured, while also challenged logically, under the support of family and peers.